Here is a definition of a complement. Suppose that we have a set belonging to some universal set U. The complement of A is a set of all elements in the universal set not in A. That is, we want this set, elements outside of A. Suppose that we have again the following sets. Let us find the complement of B. We just get the elements in the universal set which are not in U. So therefore that will just be the set of all odd numbers from 1 to 10. Next, let us compute A complement intersection B. A complement would be 1, 4, 6, 8, and 9. And of course, B is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So their intersection would be the set containing 4, 6, and 8. Here are some results on complements. First, we have the complement of the complement of a set is equal to itself. Next, we have the union of A with its complement is the universal set. The intersection of A and its complement is the null set. The complement of the universal set is the null set. The complement of the null set is the universal set. Next, we have A minus B is just the same as A intersection B complement. The next statement says that A is a subset of B if and only if B complement is a subset of A complement. That is, when you are getting the complement of subsets, the order of the sets gets interchanged. This makes sense because when you get the complement of the bigger set, that is B, will be smaller than the complement of the smaller set. This is the complement of B, whereas this whole thing here is the complement of A. It is much bigger than the complement of B and it actually contains all of B complements. Next, A intersection B is the empty set, meaning to say they share nothing in common, if and only if A is a subset of B complement. This only means that A is outside of B, because it is a subset of B complement. We also have the Morgan's Law. What is they saying? When you get the complement of a union, you just get the complement of each set, but you have to turn union into intersection. Same thing with intersection. Intersection will become union when you get the complement. Let us prove part 5. Let us show that A is a subset of B if and only if B complement is a subset of A complement. For this direction, we want to show that a subset of B implies that B complement is a subset of A complement. So we suppose our premise. And then we want to show that B complement is a subset of A complement. Standard way of showing subset relationship, get an arbitrary element here. Let X be an element of B complement and we want to show, this is in green just so that you know where you are going, show that X must be an element of A complement. What does it mean for X to be in B complement? It means that X is not in B. We want to show that X is an element of A complement, that is... X is not in A. To prove this, I will proceed by contradiction. Suppose that X is an element of A. If X is an element of A, but we have our premise that A is a subset of B, what will happen? It only means that X must be an element of B as well. That contradicts this fact that X is not an element of B. Hence, X must not be in 
A or equivalently X is an element of A complement. So we obtained what we want. You started with an element of B complement and we ended up with that element being in A complement. Next, we want to show that if B complement is a subset of A complement, then A must be a subset of B. In order to prove that, we will make use of part 1. The complement of the complement of a set is equal to the original set. How will we make use of that? I have subset relationship here. So I will use this part here. Remember, this one is saying that if one set is a subset of another set, then when you get its complement, when you get the complement, the order will change. So by the previous direction, B complement subset of A complement implies that when you get the complement, the order will change. And so we now have that A is a subset of B. That takes care of this direction. Lastly, let us recall the meaning of disjoint sets. Two sets are disjoint whenever their intersection is the null set. In terms of Venn diagrams, they will look like this. Here are examples of disjoint sets. The set containing 1, 2, B, and the set containing negative 1, T, N, and 8. Set of even and odd integers. They have nothing in common. And the open interval 0, 1, and 1, 2. Sometimes you will be asked to show that two sets are disjoint, which is the case in this example. We have two sets A and B. We want to show that these two sets are disjoint. When you are asked to show that two sets are disjoint, it means that we will show that their intersection is empty, right? However, when you are showing that a set is empty, it's always good to proceed by contradiction because it's difficult to show that this is a subset of the null set because the null set does not contain anything, correct? So it's better if you just assume that it is non-empty and then find a contradiction. This is our strategy in proving that these two sets here are disjoint. So we suppose that their intersection is not empty. So this is the first set intersection A intersection B is not empty. So that is, there is an element. Thus, there exists an element X, which is in this set. And an element of this second set. We need to find a contradiction. For this part here, this is saying that X is in A intersection B complement or X is an element of A complement and B. Since we have OR, we will divide it into two cases. Suppose that X is an element of A and B complement. What will it mean? It means that X is in A and X is element of B complement. But for you to be in B complement, it means that X is not in B. Can it happen that X is not in B? No, because we have X is an element of A intersection B. This contradicts the fact that X is an element of A intersection B. So we have a contradiction. For the other case, X is an element of A complement intersection B. This is similar to the first case. So we have X is not in A. I will just use that because X is an element of A complement and X is in B. This will be the contradiction. It contradicts the fact that X is in A and B also. So therefore, in both cases, we have found a contradiction. So therefore, our original assumption is false. Therefore, the two sets must be disjoint. 
So remember, class, that when you are proving by cases and you want to show a contradiction, you have to make sure that both of your cases will yield a contradiction. Because if one of the cases will not yield a contradiction, that is not valid.